Safari. There we go. So I'm going to try to go ahead and update the types for Ember data. And the reason is that we just shipped at Ember data slash a bunch of modules. Everything used to live in this Ember data module. Now everything's going to live in an at Ember data NPM namespace and not come off of this kind of DS object namespace. Everything will actually have a proper import, basically just like the rest of Ember data. Now the trick here is that to do this, we need to create all of these packages and we need to be able to go ahead and then map over the existing Ember data types into the new data types. Doing that is not super complicated or crazy. It's mostly just a lot of work, but I figured it was actually therefore a good opportunity to show some of the mechanics of how definitely typed works. I just realized that there's more info that might be handy for me to show to myself down here. Yay, there's one viewer. Magical. So what we want to do is go through and map those types over. And I journaled out a little plan for this a little bit ago because that's how I do things. And I'm going to start by just actually generating all of the relevant package information that we need in this types namespace. Also, I'm going to drink coffee because iced coffee, single origin coffees are good. Notably, TypeScript was one of the motivating reasons for why we're doing this with Ember data in the first place. So we have a detailed design here where we have all of the new locations. There are Ember data slash model, Ember data slash adapter, Ember data slash serializer, Ember data slash store, slash tracker data, slash relationship layer, and slash debug. All of these things currently live in the Ember data types and are exported under the original good old paths so that you could look at the index, which is where we are, and get everything off of this slightly horrible, but it's how everything was, DS namespace. But then you could also go to Ember data slash model, and this re-exports things. So what we need to do at this point is go ahead and make this work such that it is basically going to transform all of these exports over into a new bunch of exports over here. Now to do this, I'm going to have to go look at definitelytyped.com or github slash definitely typed slash definitely typed and look at how you create a new package because it has been a bunch of months since I've done this. We are going to try to get good coverage along the way in terms of type tests, and that way we'll be able to generate the types we want. There's also one very important thing, which is slightly crazy, which is that we name things at types slash ember data. That's going to have to be at types slash ember underscore underscore data in the types directory here in Ember data stuff because definitely typed has this notion of the at types namespace, which everything gets published to. So when you look at your package.json, if you're using Ember CLI TypeScript, you'll see at types slash Ember underscore underscore object. TypeScript knows how to resolve that to types for at Ember slash object. Same thing here. So the first thing we're going to do is create a directory for the project with the same name. So I'm going to very simply, I've already created a branch here. I'm going to make dir ember data. If I could type, goodness gracious. It's going to be how this goes, isn't it? I had that wrong are under ember data. So the underscore underscore maps, the first thing essentially makes this ember 
namespace, and then this, a folder within it. So what we actually need to do, huh, is go into Ember data. No, well, what, okay. Wow, I feel extremely coherent right now. What we need to do is make dir each of these. Ember data underscore model and make dir ember data underscores adapter and underscores serializer and underscores store and record data and relationship layer and debug. And then within each one of those, we're going to start by doing re-exports. And that'll be the first PR I open. The next PR I open after that will actually invert this relationship so that instead of, as is the case today where Ember data slash model re-exports things from Ember data, instead what we'll be doing is having Ember data, this global namespace, re-export things from at ember data slash model slash relationships etc because that is in fact the new canonical representation and if you go poking around in the definitely typed repository we did the same thing by which i mean mike north hero and champion did the same thing with ember itself eight months ago and it was a lot of work and we we're very grateful but we'll start this way and then invert it and that'll get us the pieces we need in place so, looking again at the definitely typed instructions, we're going to add these things. We're going to say, going to go into Ember data underscore model, because I'm going to start with model because it's kind of the core in a lot of ways. We may find that we need to add the other ones, and along the way we'll generate our dependencies. But I'm going to say, oh hey, I'm going to Volta install. DTS gen. Volta is a very nice tool chain manager that I've worked on over the last six months. If you're not using it, I encourage you to check it out. It lets you manage uh, user level, what you might think of as globals in a traditional node version manager context, or also local tools in terms of node and yarn and have those work in specific versions. So I'm using it to manage DTS gen instead of using NPX. But here I am in this directory, I'm going to run DTS gen. You can see Fish is helping me because I've done this before. Yeah, template is indeed module, and I'm just going to change the name to... Let's see what it does if I just type the name correctly. Ember data slash model. I think it'll do the right thing. Oh, I was totally wrong. So what we can actually do is just go ahead and remove this, it looks like. As I said, I'm Rusty. It's been a while. Oh, it would help if I could read the command line error. Make dir model. I need to do this from the root. Overwrite. Okay, so now we have successfully created it. Types, Ember data, model. Uh, what if I just drop the name in? Shouldn't do it here. What does it do? It needs a name. Huh. I'm sure if anyone who actually has done this more recently than me is following along, they're face palming and telling me all the things to do. Types, Ember Data, Model, TS Gen, 
that one. Still not generating it. Let's do the help again. Oh right, DTS Gen only does this for a JavaScript object. Right, that's not actually what we want. Okay. Types, Ember data model. Right, I can't do that. Make dir Ember data model. So now in here, I'm going to go ahead and add this to my working project for Ember for code. I'm going to generate the relevant files. index.d.ts. And then I want to look at the test structure here because I want to do basically the same thing. Under test. And remember. So that should be fine. <laughs> Similar to this set of declarations here, we're going to do the same kind of thing. It would help if I could name things properly, not TSS config, but tsconfig.json. Wrong one. Compiler options. We're going to declare this as module being common JS. In fact, I'm just going to copy most of this over entirely. I'm a little curious about the base URL being one level up. That may be the norm in DT. We're going to need pretty much all of these, in fact. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this over. And then edit it. Files, I'm going to drop almost all of this that is not under the model bits. So then down to, I'm going to want to pull in that assert lib for certain. And we're going to want to keep the registry as well. I'll explain the registry when we get there. And I'll leave model as is. That's what I thought. What is that one? Got it. Okay, so a lot of this is what we'll actually be copying effectively. This set of tests here just imports those. And we'll start by making sure that this stuff is right. 
once we start copying. Don't actually need that, however. So adapter serializer transformed. Yeah, this stuff is all basically gone. And I have an extra item there. So this should all be correct because this set of paths tells definitely typed how to resolve all the Ember stuff, which we will need. For those of you who are watching, if you have questions, please drop them in chat. I'm happy to answer. And I will try to look down fairly regularly. Hopefully Twitch pings me. I don't actually know though. That's the model test. What I actually want is a model. And then I need to see what all comes off of. Model Azure belongs to and has many. TS lint JSON to match. <laughs> Not sure what this means. That's always worrisome. I want to reevaluate that once I'm done, but I'm not going to assume that it's worth changing right now. Test model. I'm going to start by pulling all of this into new file model.ts. So the testing infrastructure is interesting. It doesn't actually run anything. It just runs the type checker over everything. Uh, don't copy the path, copy the whole thing and drop it in test. So now we have lib slash assert. There's a lot of stuff missing here. I don't really want to bring that in that way. I'm going to start by just reproducing what we had so that we can see that things work correctly. But, oh, come now. That's in the right spot. TS config should be fine. Index is included. Types registries we need to include. New folder types. Registries. Model.d.ts. So model registry is a hack that we came up with that basically lets us map the string keys that you use in store dot query record or whatever else to the names of your models. Registries. That one. Let's put it there. These two will 
be merged, so the fact that they both exist won't kill anything. But yes, we have types, registries, model. We have test lib assert. We have test model. This thinks that lib assert doesn't exist. Now it knows that it exists. Sometimes with VS Code and the language server, you just have to restart things. Closing and opening the file will do it. So instead of importing from Ember data, which this kind of knows how to resolve because it's in definitely typed and it knows all of those bits, we're instead going to import model. This is where we start effectively TDDing. Atter belongs to and has many from at ember data slash model. We're going to drop this entirely and every instance of ds dot we're going to delete. Now ember data slash model doesn't actually exist. So what I'm going to do next is code open Ember application should be a good, relatively simple model for us here. I'm going to look at its thing. And I'm trying to see if it does anything special to know what the lookup path is. So this should be resolving. Right, it would help if I were Yeah, I need to declare this thing itself. Now, we're not going to need all of these per se for this, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to leave them for now, and we'll sort it out later. Okay, having updated our configuration, is not a module. So this is a new error, which is great. We're going to start with effectively this as our new model index.d.ts. Here, I'm going to go ahead and remove member application from the workspace. So now what I'm going to do is also export. I'm going to go ahead and destructure Atter has model. And how does model do this in Ember data? It doesn't, right. Uh, where did that used to live? Relationships. Yeah. So 
So there's a re-export bit we are working on. Typed ember slash ember CLI TypeScript. Going to go to issues. We had a nice good discussion about this in this issue and I'm going to pull it up for reference because we talked through it and it was a useful rule. Right. So this is what we're doing. We're re-exporting here. Type of ds dot has many, and we'll basically go the other direction once we resort. So I'm duplicating these lines and just changing them to atter and belongs to, then coming over here, atter appears to work, uh, changed attributes, where is changed attributes defined? I don't recall. That was being pulled from Ember data itself. So here's an interesting dynamic that we're going to have to sort through. There will be some items here that still have to be pulled from Ember data because they may not have exports, at least for types only, that map to what we need them to. So let's think this through. Where am I looking? Here. So we don't have a notion of where the types live yet, at least as far as I know. This is one of the things that I intend to try to solve via an RFC later this year, hopefully in the next couple of months, for how we can actually officially support... Oh, hello, that yogurt I was going to eat, I forgot to eat. How we can officially support TypeScript and Ember. And this is something the Typed Ember team has been mulling on for quite some time. Uh, we don't, as a team, having the, I should say, the Ember team doesn't officially recommend my own employer, LinkedIn, doesn't officially recommend TypeScript adoption with Ember at this point because of some of these dynamics that we need to solve. In this case, I think having this attribute come in from Ember data is probably the right call for right now. So while I'm not going to pull all of Ember data in this way, I am going to go ahead and pull in, as in I'm not going to pull in the DS namespace, I'm going to pull in changed attributes. And at this point, everything in fact appears to be type checking. So now I'm going to start by seeing whether everything actually does what it should. And the way to do that is test. Um, there we go. If I remember right, you can simply run from the root of definitely typed yarn DTS lint type slash ember data model. So if I've done things correctly, this should pass. Ah. Something is broken. The next question is what? But this is what we want. In fact, I'm going to use a tool called watch exec. I don't need a directory watch, but I'll grab that anyway. And it just lets you run a command when things change in your package. So I'm going to actually just grab that previous command. I'm going to run it anytime things change, basically running my tests in TDD mode. Granted, it's a little bit of a slow TDD mode, but it is a TDD mode. Ah. 
uh, I realize that I can respond in chat. Tonic the Brave, thank you for noting as much. How bad is the reverb? It may just be because my microphone is not right here. And I can adjust that if need be. So if I drop the volume on, uh, let me go ahead and turn that block off. Does that help with the audio level? I wish that Twitch chat would tell me how long ago you said that. Show timestamp. There we go. Closeness does not cure it. Interesting. Uh, that would be why. Um, I think there are two audios running in. Okay, let's try something. Does this work better? My guess is very yes. Haha, <laughs> yes, okay. So I was accidentally running in the, this is what you get when you do this the first time, and I was accidentally running in the main microphone from the machine rather than, and the nice fancy microphone. I can probably now, let's see if I can tweak this. Let's turn that back on and go here. And you should still be low reverb, relatively speaking, but still be able to hear me fine. If that works, I'll leave it there because not having it in my face is much better. Thank you for the feedback. Super helpful. And now I won't have that problem next time I do this. Can I remove that one? I don't know. I'll figure this out for the next time I do this. First time, everybody. Uh, thank you, Tonic the Brave. Okay. So type constraint does not satisfy the constraint never. So this actually does have to do with the re-export issue. So this is coming from the model registry. And that is here, not found. And that's coming from Ember data. Ah, that's not the right thing. And I can actually see it in my editor here. So let's see what's up. Peak problem does not satisfy the constraint, never. Most likely if I simply delete this, it'll be fine, but that's not really what I want to do. Also, I have no idea why. Nope. I delete the extra definition of it and remove the file entirely. Does that help? My guess is no, but we'll find out. Bingo. Okay, that does not what we want for certain. And I want to drag the file back. into registries. And I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and leave it out for now. And I will just do this during the migration when we invert, as I described a couple of minutes ago. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of the tsconfig.json. Just go ahead and delete it entirely. Let's 
so it should be fine. It's correctly reverted. And the same way that the existing Ember data bit does the right thing, which I need to go see how it does the right thing again. I'm actually a little curious how this is working on master. So I'm going to go ahead and create a working bit here. and check out master. I have an alias for checkout, as you do. Nope, not that one, just Ember data. I don't know why DTS lint dumps 12 lines of code at blank space or whatever that is. It has always driven me slightly nuts. So that's good and that's what we expect and what we want. thinking here. So we're exporting the model registry from this location as well as from that location. Which seems fine until we run the tests. And it's not these tests, it's in the resolution from... Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's happening here is that back in Ember data slash index dot d dot ts, this is the complicated bit of trying to manage all of this. Yeah, let's close that one. And let's go to line 960, column 52. This model registry is being resolved as we would expect. It doesn't have anything actually in it. And so I need to figure out how stuff gets added to it in the first place. So what I'm actually going to do is just find all instances of this. Uh, so my guess then, yes, so this is what's happening. <sighs> okay, lovely. So right now, the world we live in is that all of these things resolve over in the context, though that's kind of weird. Ah, I see the... Okay, so let me finish my sentence there, and then I'll fix this problem. These declarations give us the models, the registries, and the registry is a way, like I said, of mapping a string key to a type. The tests are resolving in the main Ember data space, basically coincidentally. These declarations here in the store module Goodness, have I gone through a lot of coffee already. These declarations in the store module here, the test store module, are 
effectively global. They declare a module and they merge all of this. And this is how this actually works in your apps or add-ons if you're using it. But what it means is that because this isn't included in this test isn't included over in my new test for the model, there's nothing there for it to look up. So what I need to do is come over here to the model test, this one, and somewhere in here, I need to go ahead and import, I'm actually going to go ahead and import the model registry as well. That should help with merging it and then declare module Perhaps even if I simply do model registry. I'm going to experiment. I don't know the answer. Yeah, no, you can't do that. Okay, declare module number data types registries. Actually, I think you can do this at ember data slash model. And then since we're re-exporting it, and that will be the canonical export location eventually probably it may end up being like ember data slash types slash model or something like that we'll need to decide on a space for it as a team There we go. I believe this will now work correctly. So what I've done is I've just said, hey, the model registry actually has something in it now. I'm using type of there because, woo! <sighs> right. Um, there's a hack for this. Hate it. So this is telling me that M type of person is not a model. Which is, as we can see here, a lie. It is in fact a model. It is a model and constructible. This and new given these properties and new given these things is basically how mix-ins work here. And we hacked around this before, and now I have to see how to hack around it again. And really, we should have some tests in place. So perhaps I will, well, in some sense, the existence of this is the test, but. Right, I'm going to come back to this question. TTS, TS lint, and TS lint. think this is the relevant rule we were where I was seeing multiple declarations and things just being confused so yes here I really like these two too whoops just live in the same place rather than having more than one of them. So what's curious is this exists, I can see it, right? It's right here. Why doesn't it think it exists anymore? So all this was working a few seconds ago until I made these changes.
Ipes registries model. It's right there. Okay, so that is clearly not the actual issue. Let's find everywhere that this is done. This should quote unquote just work. Something about perhaps the existence of this, which this knows how to find it. I'm going to try something. Code types ember data by itself. Let it load everything up. Yep. I think this specific one is a case of VS Code being confused by having multiple workspaces, multiple folders in the workspace, because when I'm running this by itself, it's resolving it just fine. Now, that doesn't mean that this isn't going to be a problem. It may be that the TS server is accurately representing a way that TypeScript itself is going to be confused. Not sure, but we will find out. One way to tell on that is to say model by itself. Let's see what we see once this boots up. initializing JS and TS language features. It has done so. I want to see what the type resolves to if I do class human extends model. This config.json needs to say experimental decorators is true. What is the type here? Thank you, Tonic the Brave. Have a good weekend as well. If I yarn DTS lint this now, my guess is it type checks just fine. Nope. Hmm.
That might, though. It's interesting that the re-exports don't work. Hey -o. That's novel and exciting and fun. In other words, lat. Something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Horribly, horribly wrong. Goodness gracious. Well, that's fascinating. Let's get rid of all of that. Turned on experimental decorators in the other one, which I don't think that should matter. The run the dependency direction shouldn't shouldn't run that way. But because of how closely coupled these are. Yeah, okay, that's good. I mean, it's horrible, but it's good. Mm. Mm. Okay. Got it. I need this header metadata. We need at least 2.8. I might need newer than that. This should help a bit. It's not going to try to run it against TypeScript 2.0 anymore. By default, it's going to run it against stuff pretty early. In this case, we should actually probably set it to something much more recent in the 3.x series. 2.8 is the minimum. Well, so much for that theory. So I think what happened is we were seeing this before, and this error was a real error that we fixed by passing it a model register. Yep, okay, that's what I expected. Instead, now we're seeing deeper errors. Let's try this again. If it's not resolving what? It's having trouble with exclude, right? Cannot find name exclude, but I can see the name exclude. Why is it running against TypeScript 2.0? 
It's not supposed to be running against TypeScript 2.0. Let's ask the internet. Also, we can type yarn DTS lint and get help. And hey, Mike North. Yep, so this is showing me what I thought. TypeScript version. It's where it should be. Hmm. So the problem here, I should take a step back for those watching and following along at home. <laughs> or at work, I suppose. The problem here is that we're running what should be TypeScript 2.8. Both of these specify that as their required version. But when I am here in Ember Data, this exclude type was added in, I think, TypeScript 2.8, actually. We could see when it was pushed in by going to typescriptling.org and looking at the docs and looking specifically at the what's new. I believe if we look here, yep. Predefined type exclude was added in 2.8. And we're using that here to say, we want in, in certain cases, keys that come from the model itself, but not from the base class. And so for example, with person, if we ran model keys here or human, we would get the username off of human and we wouldn't get all of the other things which live on this base class is empty, is loading, is loaded it, all of that. The reason that's useful is because you can do attributes and relationships based on that. Now, in principle, we could actually filter this yet further so that we actually get things that only extend attributes or relationships. However, we can't really do that effectively using decorators because decorators are allowed to touch the type. So when we're looking at this definition, we don't actually know that this thing is an attribute. Here, we actually do. We could check if we had this return a type that was an attribute, which is essentially just a branded name for a specific type of computed property or whatever. There's ways we could do it in this style of declaration, the old pre-ES6 class style of declaration, but we can't do it. We can't mark the types that way unless we wrote a type that let us write something like this, which is actually not a terrible idea, except that it's verbose and kind of annoying. You're writing at her username, at her string, and that type would be something like interface at her Actually, it's probably, I would probably write it as something like type adder t equals t and or something horrible like that. And figure out some way to hide even this from you. Basically, you just need a branded value. Um, there are ways to do that. They're none of them particularly lovely. You can do something like this, branded T, class branded T, and say adder T, and make that private, and say, 
And then this becomes a type, and we, we can mess with this a number of different ways, but if we did that kind of thing, then if you had, so I'm going to show this for the sake of showing it because I think it's interesting. Declare let human be a human, human.username, dot length, all the normal string things work on it, but we would then be able to pluck that off. And ultimately, if or when we get the ability to specify types of things with decorators, we'll do something like this. And that branded T doesn't change anything about this. There's no additional properties on it. There's nothing else but the string values on it. But it's an attribute of a string rather than just a stringy string. So in principle, we could do something like that. However, for the moment, this is all quite irrelevant. So I'm going to delete it and get back to what I was doing in the first place, which is trying to figure out how the heck to make this work. Um, why TypeScript version 2.8 isn't being respected here. Of this does it matter it shouldn't matter nope Whoop. This is the part where I ask my trusty friends. Yep, that's, that's the one. I have no idea what that is. Let's look here in the issues list. Let's eliminate possible causes of failure. Boy. 
So that is not it, which is what I would expect. I'm going to go chew on this while I hit the bathroom real quick. I will return.
I have returned, as you will have observed. There are some ironies in this document that I will pass over for the moment. In principle, I could do this, but it should not be necessary. We're not using anything from later TypeScript. supposed to be here. This should work. Why is it not working? There's nothing. There's no package.json. There is nothing in the TS config that would change this behavior. So why does this work and that doesn't? stupid, but nope. Let's cheat for a minute. Huh. Okay, this should also break in exactly the same way. If it doesn't, I will be very confused. Okay, that's, that's good. Well, I mean, sort of. So that's requiring 2.8. Good with saying these things should come in this better way while we're at it. Seems seems good. Answer a text from my wife. Even though I work from home, we often text each other, which is kind of great. That way we can just do the things we need to while not. There's nothing here. Oh, 
while we're at this, docs dot how what is it? I don't know. Let's get there from the root. API. This should have just been fixed. Hooray. Number data. No, I need I need 3.11. Let's ask in Discord. figure out what it'll be <laughs> based on this plus this yeah okay so the path will be I that I found oh it was an object stuff yeah the API is what we want percent to F model doesn't exist and that's fine. I expect it not to exist yet. <laughs> uh, should really not work. It's like the parse is wrong. I may have to dive into DTS lint's code to make this work, which would not really be what I want to do today. Uh, but it looks like I'm going to. Start by Volta, which ETS lint. What? Oh, DTS gen I installed globally, DTS lint I did not. That's fine. <laughs> um, node inspect break. Then DTS lint. Uh, better yet, let's, let's generate a configuration. I'm not going to commit this. Modules in uh, that's not actually what I want. 
did I want? Delete. Let's generate a debug configuration. Mm. Let's break here. Uh, it totally does. No, it totally doesn't. Workspace folder slash dot dot slash dot dot slash that. Let's try it now. for it. What is happening here? It's like it's not getting into this code path. Let's try it again. Uh, is it because I'm an idiot? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, okay, everyone. So I can tell you why this isn't working. These don't need to be in the test file. They need to be in the index file. And this will all stop. This will all just work now. Yay. Debug console. Clear. Okay, and the terminal, that's fine. Okay. Yarn DTS lint that. Magic. Makes a difference if you put things in the right file. <sighs> wow. Okay. Change that back to what it was before. <laughs> Truly magical. Well, aren't you special? Guys. know what this is because we just saw it. In the types repo. Ah, it is coming in from DT 
kslint slash dt dot json. Let's go to code. It's presumably got this. Really? What are you guys developing against? I don't... What is even happening here? Yep, okay, so that hasn't changed, so where's it coming from then? Show me a lot of things, right? Like a lot. Uh, let's do this into something that's paged. There's nothing in the root though, right? Presumably coming out of this. That makes sense. NPM naming. actual error message we got was <sighs> export default right because it's not mm. so what we need to do is go ahead and add just set npm naming to false
magical. Stuff actually works. Okay, so in principle, what I've done now actually has stuff working in terms of the imports that are defined in Ember data slash model working. There are a couple things that I don't love here, but what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and commit this change and start doing the same thing, which should come much smoother with each of the other areas. And then probably sometime in the middle of next week or on an airplane next week when I'm traveling for work, I will start the work of inverting them so that we can actually get things in place. And then we'll also start tightening up the type exports along the way. Now, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and close these and see if I can see, let's just run a general yarn DTS lint in the background while this is happening and make sure, right, types. Uh, wrong. Make sure that that still works correctly as well. It should. Types, uh, just the Ember data types should not be affected by this, but one never knows. What I'm trying to see is, yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So that re-export doesn't currently work and that's fine. We'll have to do that. That's gonna be an annoying change for users when we change this. I wonder, I'm going to write this down as a consideration for myself. Should we create a module that only exists for TS. Akin to Ember Data Types Registries Model. in the add ember data namespace. I think the answer is yes, and I think we should think hard about what it should be. Add ember data slash types is actually probably a pretty good spot for it. What I'm looking for now is Thing that works with the registry that uses the old style class declaration. I don't actually see any, but I know it works because I've done it. Oh, these are a bit of a mess. None of these do it. Oh, right, I recall now. So the way this worked before, which was awful, I'm going to rework this change because it's not actually related. I'm going to save without reformatting. Yeah, so the way I managed to make this work before 
Now I'm going to make this work. These should all do the right things. Yeah, I am going to go ahead and just include that uh, so that this works. For those who are curious, however, what we actually used to do is say in my previous code base, class user extends model.extend. This horrible, horrible thing does in fact work. So make sure it all continues to type check user user. That should type check correctly. All of this should continue to do the kinds of things that it does. And in fact, we can see in the editor that it does. And it's hot garbage, but it works. <laughs> oh, yeah. This should actually just be able to become that now. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, right, it would help if I removed the thing which no longer exists. Given how these are used, I may actually switch this back in a second. Yeah, okay, so that works. So I'm going to go ahead and revert this and this. Type of user, right, that's how that works. So what I was trying to do, there's a way to do. So this is wrong because type t equals type of person. Yeah, <laughs> it's this nightmare. Uh, so I could do this now. I could do person, instance type, type of person, and it'll do the right thing in type check. <laughs> uh, goodness, the horrors, the great and terrible horrors. Okay, so what I'm going to do is write a little type helper in the assert. Yes, these things should be up here. And I'm going to export type model class T.
that doesn't actually help any. Let me think. Is there a better way? Do this. Because that's just this. It doesn't need to be exported type model class. a type. Type of person is how you get the type there. There's no actually good way to do this. So you just write instance type and the same thing for user instance type type of actually I'm going to make this user User and person is just going to be person. I'm going to say class person extends model dot extend. What a horrible nightmare! And I'm going to say class human extends model. And I'm going to use the atter age number. Everybody has one of those. Human, human, save, let it type check. I think we are pretty much good to go at that point. We are. Okay, so this is sufficient for my purposes. Except that I want to say to person and as many human friends as many human and mother and father that should still type check, as it does. I'm going to do the same thing here. At belongs to human mother human that has many person children. Person. Those types aren't actually exactly right. Yeah. This is technically a promise many array. Of persons. And we'll be able to refactor that. Does this actually have exports for that? Is a great question. Promise many array? <sighs> no.
So these are types which will be returned by things, but not actually nameable or importable. attributes is an interface so it's not not mentioned right so I'm going to leave a comment here explaining my reasoning Promise many array will be returned by has many. So in fact, I can do that. Hello, might be able to do that now. Uh, let's leave that comment for the moment. Type f equals return type has many. Type of has many. This is now actually technically correct. <laughs> um, Okay, so this is a tricky spot where it technically returns a computed property. So there's an, un I could write this. I can write type uncompute equals t extends ember dot. return type ember type of computed uh, yes type for you, then you, else t. So then we could write the very absurd uncomputed return type that key. What is this now? Ah, the mapping isn't isn't what we want. 
which is a little annoying. Uh, that's because I've done this wrong in some way. So you have the return type of this. The problem is that has many is defined in a way that makes it so that I don't think we can actually do this. Yeah. So we're going to need to revisit this at some point. It's not going to be today. Also, I can drop these breakpoints and close DTS lint and also go ahead and delete that. That was useful enough even though it got us there in a secondary way. But we are at some point going to want to define these things in a way that users can use them. And that's not for today, but uh, it'll do the trick. Dot has many array. Sorry, it's promise many array person. Creating and exporting a type which represents as many person. I could delete this import. So I'm going to go ahead and commit this. Once this last check finishes. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to get reset to my parent. I'm going to add everything. And having done this for this one, it's going to go a lot faster for all of the others because I've sorted out all the weirdnesses, basically. Uh, the model registry can actually go away as well. I'm going to give this a name. Cool. So now, uh, what am I missing? Git commit everything. I'm going to go ahead and push this to a new branch for myself. I'm going to go refill my water bottle, and then I'm going to see how much I can knock out how quickly. It's going to take a minute to do this. So while it does that, water bottle time. Be right back.
I've been saying things and you haven't been able to hear me. Good job, self. I forgot to unmute. Basically, I'm just filling out the minimal bits and I'm going to take all the adapter tests. Um, move them to the places where they go. Extend them when necessary. So over here, the rest adapter. in like this and again we're just going to re-export those later good Do that in a type declaration. Yeah. This is a case where, okay, I'm going to make the import correct at ember data slash adapters slash rest. Doesn't like that path for reasons called I haven't mapped it here. I have though, should be there. Adapter slash rest, right? Yep, adapter rest. Okay, so that works and that's good. Um, but this is the case where the rest adapter type here. It needs to be exported properly per our discussion on this. So in this scenario, if we don't re-export this way, stuff comes out funky. And in fact, this is causing us problems in our existing type definitions. So, fixed, hooray. Um, we don't need that. I am going to basically write new tests and say, customized extends adapter in similar ways. I'm going to say at service session session. It would help if I imported that.
I'm trying to recall, I believe there is an adapter registry. That's correct. So I want to say declare module ember data types registries adapter export default interface adapter registry customized customized Similarly over here for JSON API. And once again, we're going to export These tests need a lot of work in truth. But for the moment, I'm just going to essentially leave them as they are so that we can get forward progress so that next week or the week after, we can just invert these and flip them to be the way that we need them to be. I'm going to come back to the Ember Data Store one. So now that I'm looking at this file, same thing. Declare const store type of ds.store type store equals ds.store export default store. So once again, properly re-exporting. And I need to actually go ahead and push that back into the existing type definitions as well. I will do that in a follow-up. Okay, let's look at some of the other ones in here. Oh, not there. Here. This adapter build URL mix in. Do we have any tests for that here? of no it's only here okay I'm going to go ahead and get exactly this copy it into a test here Import both of, well, let's import the adapter. Okay, fine. Import adapter from ember data slash adapter. 
This file is not in the tsconfig, so we go ahead and add it to We're using files, I don't know. Lots of things should fail, but the include shouldn't matter, but test slash. What's the import for it? Actually, that's fine just put this in there because it tests the module. Type ID snapshot. Gah. This is probably why there wasn't a test for it. Uh. Okay, I can cheat. Let's go look at what the types actually are. It's not even in the types at all. Yikes. Um, anyway, we can come back here and finish doing the thing I was doing, which is string snapshot. Are snapshots somewhere? Where do snapshots live? Hey. Eh? 
No import. Cool. Lies. That should totally exist. Let's enter data model. Totally exists, yo. Might just be confused at the moment. Well, I'll pass right on down through because I. What? Ah, uh, right, okay. So here I need to do Huh. That's a class. like you don't need that if you do it this way. It's re-exporting correctly, so cool, cool. I'm confused though. I need to dig into why that's misbehaving at some point. Yikes. It's just mix ins. Cool.
single waffle. Yes, okay, so you can collapse these together. That is much preferable. Just documented inlines, you don't end up with. And yes, I always use waffle to describe things. <clears throat> it's good test data. Object query parameters. Steady on, steady on. Not going to type build URL. Looks like I am typing URL for find record. I'm going to look at the raw version of this so it copies correctly. I'm actually just going to copy it into this. we go. <clears throat> Putting this in helps people understand what's actually in front of them when they're looking at it because they actually get nice completion for these things from their docs that way or from hovering that way. <clears throat> Same thing here. So let's go ahead and grab all of this. this, call this JS, boom, uh, give that a couple spaces. How magical, give these too many spaces. And I'm going to make the formatting here more consistent as well. go. TypeScript may be obsessive about everything being four spaces long, but I'm not. Just a note on timing, I'm going to go till about five o'clock my time. That'll be a three hour long session. Hopefully that'll be plenty long. People who watch this on YouTube later, please, I hope you've been watching it like 4x because this is slow going. But this is how it goes. You just kind of work through it and get the work done. Did I just do that one? No, for update record. And 
once you get the work done, everything is grand. But it definitely does take some time to do it. String. And once you get the flow going, that helps. Snapshot returns a string. In fact, on each of these, I'm going to leave the return in place. So that one should also be return URL for it belongs to. Build URL will also be at return URL. That's probably obvious, but anything you can give people to help, it's worth giving people to help. So that I'll need to tweak later. Path for type, probably. This is a case where I'm adding types as I go because what else are you going to do? Um, because otherwise we can't actually put the types in place. And every time we touch these, we find more stuff like this where it's been a best effort level of getting things done. <clears throat> At this point, that's no longer really a thing that's going to fly going forward because if we want this to be a kind of thing that we can actually use as Ember as a group, we have to make this something that is in fact, you know, usable. And that means it has to be accurate and it has to be complete. So we're working on that. That's one of my major projects over the next many months. Because as you can see, and yeah, I had some hiccups and stuff along the way as I was spinning back up and doing something I hadn't done in a while. But <clears throat> there's still quite a bit here that just takes some time to get done, especially when there are missing pieces. I'm also hoping in the next few months, and we will see to what extent this does or doesn't play out, but I'm hoping to build some tools or build on top of existing tools mostly that make this work that I'm doing right here a little easier, especially for JavaScript code bases that are already doing the thing that already have good JS doc and whatnot, and TypeScript and VS Code already have some this way, but there's more we can do. So, hey, we now have a build URL mix in, we can export it, and now that should work. Boom, happiness. This is what we have to do. I knew there was a missing piece. Um, So we just export both of these. That's how that works. You export the const, and you export the interface. Uh, though if you declare it, you might be able to just do the declare const, export, build, URL, mix in. No, okay. That was correct before. Export const and export interface. That should now work correctly here does fancy fancy looks like that should actually be optional let's pull this back up and look at it That seems fine. 
Reference directly or indirectly in one of its own return expressions. Ajax doesn't exist on it. Ah, I think it does. Oh, interesting. So that is just a bad example. I'm going to write that down. And I will open a bug about it on Monday. Well, I say that's a... Let's make sure that I'm not lying by looking at adapter. Yeah, adapter alone doesn't have it. So does that code sample say the wrong thing? No, um, build URL mix in. Yeah, okay, so that, that is indeed correct. Incorrect, that is. Is no this dot ajax. And later I will open a bug about that. <coughs> Just going to do it that way. Yeah, that whole example is a mess. I think this dot Ajax may work that way if you have it, the Ember Ajax adapter set up or something, but either way, much, much better this way. I don't think there is a quick fix. Okay, so that handles that. Why are you not correctly for data slash model? Really exists. <laughs> yes, let's. not resolving. This will be my last mystery of the day, I think. Store is working. 
stores a class, so this should be fine as well to just... They're exactly the same. Reload project TypeScript. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to do that, and I don't know why. And I don't even know if it's going to fix it in this case. <clears throat> Lols, it did fix it in this case, so yay. So this is an interesting one. We need here it's actually that because it's actually the the prototype of model gives you the prototype of the model. So it's a little funky. has me wondering if this is wrong and should be that instead. is the constructor. script docs there's a list of special types
So I'm pretty sure this documentation is kind of a lie, or our type is a lie. So let's find out. This will be my last bit of exploration. Right, adapter should be fine. So as you can see, this is all being converted, which is awesome. Uh, Mike North has been working closely with Chris Thoburn and Igor and David on all of that as they work on it. It's a model name that I'm looking for. Hmm. Where is that coming from then? JS model name. We open class. It does appear to be static then. So yes, this appears to be wrong thing. Huh. Yup. Found a bug. Well, yay. Okay, so adapter now checks. Is there anything else in adapter itself? No. There's a bunch of other stuff in here, but. Good stopping point. Hmm. 
I don't need that, so I do actually need that. Get check out. No, get check out master. Okay, that's fine. Well, thank you to everyone who has followed along at home. That does it for today. I will be at this again, probably not next week. I mean, I'll probably do some of this work next week, but I won't be streaming it. But I will be doing this at least once a month, working on type definitions and helping people convert add-ons to TypeScript and things like that for the rest of the year at a minimum, probably well into next year as well, as this is a major push for me going forward. Do let me know what I can do better next time, and I'll see you then. Adios.